Hello and welcome to the Audio Time Capsule episode 10. For those of you new to the show, I'm comedian Simon Kane, and this is the podcast where I bring on a guest, get them to leave 20 questions and then a year later get them to come back on and answer them. I then edit it so they're talking to their past self. All past voices will sound like this and all future voices will sound like this. To give you an example of how the podcast is structured, here's a question that I left myself before this guest arrived. Have you done any yoga? When was the last time you did yoga? And are you still plowing on with it even though you hate it? Do you still hate it? I hate it. Say that now. I really don't enjoy it. Well, okay. I think the last time I did it was a week ago. But the last time before that might have been when you did it the day you recorded that question. I just didn't make time for it. I should. I really should. I've got a bad back and I was told it would help. And um, I just I just didn't like it. And it was something that I sort of took me a while to get into even vaguely liking. Um, I bought a mat. I bought a, a mat off Amazon. Um, but I, uh, that's as far as I've got, really. Yeah, I should probably get on that. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Uh, yes, I still hate it. And we still hate it. And I will... I'll make... Cons- I'll try. For you, I'll try and do it later. And I'll try and put more time into it. Let's start the episode. Uh, This week, I am talking to American comedian Maria Shahada, who is known for her conversational delivery style and has been building an audience for her comedy uh, in America and also over in England, where she's been performing for a number of years now. Um, This episode marks her attempts to hit some large milestones in her life, personal and career, and we cover everything and how they turned out, as well as things that she couldn't remember from a year ago. So... This one's a really interesting one, and this one's really cool to hear how things sort of stopped mattering and things changed, which meant her priorities changed, and I'm, I'm not going to say much more, I'll say more at the other end, but again, it was a real joy to put this one together. If you're new here, please do remember to hit the subscribe button. If you're old here, please do give us an honest, rev- honest ideally positive review on iTunes. And either way, please do join the Facebook group. It's the best place to find out about when guests are coming on and also get exclusive content uh, from behind the scenes and hear more about this project. It's called The Audio Time Capsule and it's on Facebook, obviously. Uh, But for now, let's open The Audio Time Capsule of Maria Shahada. Hi, my name is Maria Shahada. Today's date is... August 22nd, 2016. I am currently sat in the suite venue at the Apex Hotel and Grass Market or something in Edinburgh. About this project, I am feeling that because I'm very fickle, that I'm afraid to commit to a goal and then in a year be like, what was I even thinking with that goal? I didn't do it. <laughs> but but hopefully putting it in the time capsule will make it more solid. I am Maria Shahada. This is the 27th of August, 2017. I'm in the suites venue. We're in a big room, apparently, which was, I'm used to the smaller room. That's where we were last year, so I feel cheated out of that experience. But um, here we are in the larger room, and I, I can't help but wonder, like, how much better or worse my fringe experience would have been if I had gone with, like, the suites venue. You know how, like, every time you go to a new venue, you're like, um, this would have been better. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, um, and I'm very excited to hear my questions, and I don't uh, I don't know how like it's this, I hope I've changed a bit like for the positive, but we'll see. Maybe nothing, maybe nothing has happened, and I'm gonna go like no, I'm just disappointed my past me. <laughs> so, Maria, do you remember you wanted to write a play and you wanted to you, to do more theater? and act more in theater because you don't have any background in theater. You don't really know anything about theater. You don't watch plays, but for some reason, this is what you decided to do because you like performing and you like acting and you thought you could put the two together and be in theater. Having zero background in theater, but deciding to write a play and star in it anyway, when you decided no matter what, you're going to do this, what door started opening for you? Like what surprised you? What kind of chance encounter with somebody or something that happened that opened up a door for you or explained things for you in a way that helped you achieve your goal (laughs) um oh my god I make myself laugh that's great I uh I don't think that um anything happened necessarily for the play however I will say I was in a play this year so there you go my first uh real you know not real play I mean it was a nice play but like um I did a play at the fringe 
Um, so that was, I mean, it's good to like have that experience and, and because now I'm like, oh, it's accessible. Like it can be done. So maybe that's the first step was, uh, and I got to act and it's really cool when you act in a play in Edinburgh because you have 24 plus days to actually perform this character. When like, if you're in acting class, like you'll have like two days and you'll be like, oh, I finally get this character, but we've moved on. So it was a really cool experience. And, um, you know, and you really bond with like your castmates and all that stuff. So that was fun. Um, so I still, I still want to write a play. <laughs> I just, um, also have other things I have to do too, but definitely that's like, um, I have yet to read a play, <laughs> like a real play, you know, like, like, like a, like a T.S. Eliot play. Does he write plays? He must. Uh, so yeah, but like, I don't know, but th I think it's interesting that I was like, for whatever reason, you want to write a play. And then I was in a play. So good job, me. You said you want to work on doing more characters because, you know, your stand up is fun. But like if you did more characters, it could be that much better. The thing about you and characters is that you don't do them. You're afraid of them. If anything, are just very genuine and you like to like you kind of take pride in being yourself on stage. Do you feel like you found that characters was a skill like doing characters was a skill that you could build? Or is it something that's just not in your wheelhouse? Like, how do you know? Because when you first started stand-up, you didn't do any act-outs. But then after the years passed, you did more and more act-outs, and now you're better at them. So it was just a skill you had to develop. So with characters, is it going to be in your wheelhouse? I mean, how do you know? Is it, was it, did you find it was a skill you, you developed? Or did you find, nope, you can't do characters at all? Oh, my God. I, like, I take the forever asking a question. <laughs> um, shut up already, Maria. Um, okay, so the characters thing is funny. I don't, I still don't do characters. I'm not like getting on, like putting a wig on and doing something like that is not, I don't think that's in my wheelhouse at all. I don't think I'm ever going to get up on stage and be a totally different human. But like for my, um, for my show, I have like the, I have a couple characters in it that I've kind of tried to develop. Like I have this Ukrainian therapist character that like she interweaves throughout my show. Like she comes back and I do the accent so poorly so so poorly but that's not the point the point is is that i did it and i like um you know i'm afraid of accents and i don't i still don't do like british accents or anything but um i stuck to it and most nobody's really said anything but if i say somebody to somebody after the show like oh yeah i can't do an ukrainian accent they like laugh like yeah <laughs> it's pretty bad but the point is is that i got um out of my uh comfort zone and did it and i i put a character in my show i wasn't the, i'm not on stage like in a wig and stuff. Oh, I'm doing that thing where I talk too much. I also had a lot of coffee <laughs> and it's probably what happened to me last year because I was just going on and on and on. And, um, I would, you know, um, hopefully you edit this. <laughs> People tell you you should video blog, for instance, or there's a lot of opportunity now with, uh, you know, Instagram has videos. There's Periscope, there's Facebook Live, which you're supposed to do more of. Did you? <laughs> Did you uh, go live? And what? Why? Why? If not, what's stopping you from doing it? Because it's it's kind of a fun tool. Other than you find it very annoying to get other people's live updates. Periscope. How funny is that? Nobody uses Periscope anymore. What? Like Periscope? What? A, like it was such a fun idea that just left. What happened there? Um, no, I don't do it still. That's it. Like I don't. You know. I just don't, I just feel like there's nothing, I'm so self-indulgent, like, like, here's another fucking video of me, like, nobody cares, I don't need to be, like, a part of everyone's life 24-7, just, um, I think there's something to be said for, like, being able to describe your life in words, even pictures, but video is just too full on, no. Maria, you used to podcast, it was easier because somebody else was producing it, but you decided to take matters into your own hands, you bought a Zoom, and then you never used it, and you didn't start podcasting, so, did you start podcasting, did you find a hook or did you decide your personality was enough to just be like welcome to the Maria Shahada show because honestly I think that you feel like you should have a reason for why you're doing things and you don't need a reason you, you could just do that um no you're wrong I think that reasons are really good to do things I think uh no I don't have a podcast in fact that zoom that I bought um I went to take it out of the box and it was not there <laughs> I don't know where that Zoom is. That was a very expensive thing to lose, and I've lost it. And I thought like, that maybe that's a hint. I didn't no, so I didn't start podcasting. But um, I nope, no, I got nothing to replace it. I just didn't. <laughs> so, are you marketing yourself better? Because 
I feel like you can you can hate your st- yourself and still have a career in the arts, like, or not even a career, you can still create art when you don't believe in yourself, but you can't market yourself. So, like, are you still too embarrassed to hand people your business cards? Are, you know, are you putting yourself out there more because you write something and you never put it out there? Are you putting out the podcast? Are you making the podcast? Like, you have to market yourself more. So it's not a very clear goal. It's kind of vague, but just, um, just do that. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Maria. I actually think um, you'd be very proud to know that I did put myself out there. I mean, it's not like marketing myself, but um, I wrote when I was trying to write my show, my hour show for Edinburgh, like I uh, I couldn't structure it. So I wrote it as an article and I submitted that to the New York Times thinking I would never, um, there's this modern love column that people like every week share their stories. And uh, I never thought it would get even noticed, but it did get noticed. Um, the editor contacted me and said he wanted to publish it and how great it was. And like, he was very complimentary. It was nice. Uh, so, so, th- I, and I, you know, I talked about my parents in it. I talked about Nick in it. So I was kind of worried cause I was like, well, um, I didn't think anybody would notice this and now it's going to be in the New York times. <laughs> um, so I did put myself out there. I was really worried about it. And, um, but, but I got published. So well done to me. Can I say that? I can congratulate myself. Yeah. You decided to read a book a week. How'd that go? Did you learn anything from it? Did it shape your act at all? Did you write more? Did it shape your writing at all? No. <laughs> I didn't. I never <laughs> ended up reading a book a week. I was on Audible for the longest time. I probably have so many credits building up now. I just, like, dropped it. I forgot about it. I was reading a lot of... I was listening to a lot of audiobooks about, like, um, improving your life and shit. But, but, and then you go back and you, and you try to tell somebody about it. And they're just like, so what'd you learn? And I'm like, um, there was this... They said this really th- good thing about money, but what was it? And then, but you're, it's an audible book, so you can't, it's too much to like figure out where in the track it was. So you just, it's, you forget it. You decided to stop being so negative because being negative is very tiring because you tend to get mad about literally everything. Like somebody walking too slow next to you or in front of you, somebody whistling, which is just somebody enjoying themselves. But for some reason, you just hate joy. <laughs> you, you, I mean, just like everything irritates you and eventually like you get tired of it. And so, but not only that, but your own negative thoughts, your own, like your own things you tell yourself, are you catching those negative thoughts more? And being able to turn it around or at least like are you building the habit of positive thinking well you know that's it's like I feel I just felt like I was like breaking up with myself for a second there I'm like what are you are you criticizing me you think I'm too negative am I too negative for you is that why you're leaving um so but no I stayed negative I but I I decided to stop being negative about being negative sometimes you just um you just got to be in a bad mood I actually think that um I have gotten a little more easy going about things. I mean, I catch that stuff. I d- maybe I have worked on this because I do catch that stuff. Like I, I do get, obviously Edinburgh is like the, such a trigger for if you hate slow walking or people, but um, you just try to lighten up. You try to like, you know how your, like your eyebrows will, f- will furrow and you have to like be like, release the eyebrows. <laughs> lighten your face up, relax. So yeah. Are you writing morning pages? I've been writing morning pages since 2008, but you know, if you look, it's, it's like every f- three months or every two months. It's just like, oh, the last time I wrote in my morning pages was uh, two months ago. And I've had a lot of thoughts since then. Why haven't I, why haven't I written them down? So Maria, are you writing morning pages every day? No, I have not been doing that. It's still pretty consistent, like every two months, but I have, I have a lit agent, you know, and uh, she, we were t- I was trying to figure out like what my book was about. So I was going back through my morning pages and I'm so pissed off at myself for not being consistent about it and yet still not being consistent about it. Cause I'm, I, like, I just, you realize how important it is to like keep track of all your thoughts. Cause you're so, everyone gives a shit, you know, but like, uh, no, but like it, 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 there's stuff you read and you remember and you go, Oh my God, I forgot about that. And it's really insightful things. But, um, I was like, yeah, I definitely remember to do that more. And I just don't, I just don't do it. Are you being nicer to others? I mean, because those negative thoughts don't just stop with you. They, they, they tend to, like, you, you know, you, you might shit on other people for putting themselves out there. <laughs> or maybe you're jealous. But, I mean, are you being nicer? Are you, are you kind of happy for people when they succeed in their goals? Or are you 
if you're still jealous of that, then you're not doing something for yourself that you should be doing. So catch that and start on that path because once you do, you probably won't want to be mean about other people's successes. I forget that the people are going to listen to this. So they're going to be like, well, she's a cunt. <laughs> you are kind of a cunt. Like, why are you like attacking me? I don't like my past self at all. You know what? Fuck you, Maria. Also, I am being nicer to people and I am happy for people when they like have successes because I am ha- actually happier with where I am in my career. You were kind of right about that. If I weren't getting anywhere in my career, I would be like, just like, this would be a hard festival to be at because like a lot of good things happen to people and a lot of bad things happen to people. But, you know, but I'm, I'm actually, I'm happy with how this festival went and I'm happy with what I'm doing with my career and I'm kind of like feel very much on the right track. So I'm not jealous of others and that's great, but also fuck you. Are you, are you more fulfilled? So when I ask you that, I mean, are you doing things that are like, like yoga and meditation and working on your spiritual self, if you will, but stuff that, that kind of, I don't want to say things like, did you quit drinking? Because I mean, the drinking, the smoking or shopping or any of those things are just filling that void that is, so the the end question is, are you fulfilled? Are you creating habits and doing things that are, are working towards you not needing to fill some kind of void with cigarettes, shopping, coffee, I'll always love. I'm never going to give it up. You are so LA still at this point, and it's so irritating to listen to you. Um, yeah, I'm still filling voids with coffees and cigarettes, but I'm fulfilled. <laughs> um, you know, you get there however you get there. Some people use yoga, some people drink, some people smoke. Um, I'm fine. But, you know, obviously I have to detox when I leave this festival. It's, it's just not, not a normal amount. Um, but, uh, but I'm not so, like, worried about meditation and yoga. That's, not, like, so f- funny. <laughs> um, yeah. You got to Edinburgh yesterday, last night, and you said, I want to move here. You tend to do that a lot. <laughs> you went from Columbus to Athens, Ohio, back to Columbus, to New York, to LA, to London, and now you want to move to Edinburgh. So I know you didn't, but is that urge to move still there? Like, are you, what, and what is that? Is it, it's, it's kind of like when I lived in New York, I moved around, I moved 10 times in four years because I want to experience all of it. So is it just me wanting to experience? Are you just wanting to experience all of the world? Or is it just kind of a, a mental issue? <laughs> mm, can you edit out my laugh? <laughs> oh, I irritate myself so much. Um, no, I'm done. I've experienced a lot. I don't want to move to Edinburgh at all. I am um, happy in London. And I don't like, there's no part of me that is like still like, oh, I want to live in every city in the world. Um so yeah i just think maybe i got that all out of my system um yeah traveling isn't as important to me as it was like i used to i, I want to go on holidays and stuff but i don't want to like see every fucking city in the world anymore and um that means i'm probably pretty happy in london which is great the only other city i might consider would be paris but um i can't be bothered to learn french and i just you know so i'm fine yeah no i'm done do you still not want kids because i seriously don't want kids I always wanted one kid, and then the reality of it is, because now that I'm engaged, kids are now in my wheelhouse. Like, that's something that could be in my future, and it terrifies me. I look at other people and their kids, and I look at, you know, living in Crouch End, and we're moving to Muswell Hill, and it's just like there's mummies everywhere, and just it just looks like a fucking nightmare. And I just, <laughs> nothing about having a kid appeals to me at all. I don't want to be, I don't have a motherly instinct. I don't, I'm not like, oh my God, I have to, I have to like rush to get married and have kids because I'm running out of time because I'm getting older. I'm very selfish and I love my life and I don't want to change it. Do I still feel that way? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've been staying on stage every day. I don't want kids, but I don't know if that's true. I might want one, just one though. I mean, I don't want to go crazy with kids. I'm not like, still don't have that motherly instinct. I just think that, um, you know, like, what am I going to do when I'm 60? I'll be bored. I'll probably want to create another human to entertain me. So, um, I could, I could probably have one kid. I I don't, I don't know. That's a hard one. I've been saying on stage every night, I don't want kids. And I don't know how much I actually believe that, but I'm not like, I won't be gutted if I don't have kids, but, um, I I could do one at most. That would be the only reason. It's like, what am I going to do when I get older? I should have some kids. How is Edinburgh? You're going. So pick a title for fuck's sake. I have a list of titles of like possible Edinburgh titles. I can't go five thoughts without going. That could be an Edinburgh title. It is an endless possibility of of titles. So pick a title and just do it. Just do it. Yeah, I picked a title. It's called Wisdomless. I found it on the bot on a bottle of gin, and uh, and I felt 
felt pretty right. I like you just kind of like I, I was lucky that the show ended up kind of going along with the title, but sometimes you have to pick the title before you even know what the show is. Edinburgh was good. I'm glad I did it. I'm really I'm really proud of myself. It was um, a thing that I wasn't sure I could actually do and I made it happen. I created a show, I performed it, I got good reviews. I'm like, well done. Okay. Good for you. Now do it again. Oh fuck. I don't have an idea of what the show is going to be about, but I, I, uh, I don't know. I was like, the, I, I was worried about the title because it was the easier part. <laughs> I don't know what the show is about, and that's kind of been my problem for years. Is that I don't know what, like, what's my point of view? What's my voice? I don't know. They say you're supposed to find your voice after seven years. I never found my voice. I just do it. I so I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about my new, my Ed show for next year. But how was it? <laughs> but I think it's just going to be about my, I, I, I mean, just my, my life experience to this, to this very vague, you know, but moving from live, having lived in three major cities, what have you learned? What, what was, what, what have you learned about yourself? And then what it's going to end up being about maybe is probably nothing. <laughs> or I don't know, am I going to use the Arab hook again? Cause I'm Egyptian. So, but I, I'm not particularly interested in that. I just feel like, like, do I need a hook? You know, is that going to be the thing that, like, I end up doing just to kind of get people's attention? Or or am I okay with just having it be about me kind of vague? It's so funny to listen to me not know at all what the show is because the show is so, like, obviously... The show is about my move from um, L.A. to London for love and then the realities that followed that. And it's so, like... Yeah, that's what the show is. It's just so funny to listen to myself have no idea what it was about. So there you go. And it's so current that, like, I can just keep going next year. I feel like I leave everybody with a to be continued. So next year's show will just be, like, what happened. And it's just like I'll just keep doing that every year. So I set myself up nicely. But, yeah, that was pretty lost, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, so I figured it out. So, I mean, I talk about being Egyptian in the show, but I don't think I hooked people in by it. Like, I don't think it's in my description at all that – I might say Egyptian American, but I'm not, it's not like, oh, watch this Egyptian American be all Egyptian in London, you know. <laughs> so, so no, I didn't really like rely on an Arab hook. I relied on a like rom com hook. And you had an idea yesterday morning for a short film called Snooze, where you the person, the main character, hits the snooze button. It's like snooze subtitle. What's nine more minutes? And then it just changes the whole course of their life by hitting one one snooze button because like that nine minutes changed everything so uh so i'm sure you've written that so like how are you getting it funded did you get it funded did you make it i mean you know a lot of people who could help film it so you're hilarious i totally forgot about that as soon as um i left the room when i did this interview but no i didn't write that i forgot about it completely um still a good idea it's still like a really decent idea i'm not gonna write it i i just feel like i have i have more focus now i know what i want to do and like there's no time for like, these little i have like just endless endless fucking ideas i don't have time for them if anyone else wants to write that let me know yeah so no i didn't get it funded or anything like that it's still so la maria hmm? when you look back over the last year what memory makes you the happiest oh well maria um I, I think uh, definitely the New York Times article. I was very, very happy when I found out it was being published. And, you know, he was so complimentary of the article. And I don't, I mean, he probably is complimentary of all the articles he publishes, but it made me feel good. Um, that was a huge accomplishment for me. I've always wanted to be published in Modern Love. And then I was. And, and it was in time for the festival. So people actually, people actually came out um, to my show who had who'd read my article. So that was a huge, 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 huge goal of mine and a huge deal. Maria, if you could go back to August 22nd, 2016 and record, re-recorded the first part of this podcast, what questions would you have left out and what questions would you leave in? Also, Maria, I know you and you're probably going to make fun of me. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I did make fun of you. I hate you. No, I don't. Um, uh, I don't. I would probably have like edited you, you you just like you ask a question and I'm ready to answer and then you keep going and you keep talking it's like just shut up already and let me <laughs> answer the question I don't know if I would omit anything but I would definitely like edit you down a bit god it's like you're so oh you know what I would take out is that bullshit about yoga and fulfillment that's what I would take out that made me really really hate you what's one bit of advice you would give me to help me through the next year just stay focused. What a boring piece of advice, Maria. I know. I'm so sorry. 
but there's going to be a lot of distractions for you this year and um you know what you want so just keep those goals in mind like distractions being from like other people in your life to um having ideas like snooze that just like uh just distract you from your goals like Warren, Warren was it Warren Buffett or somebody was like pick the top 10 things you want to do in life and then eliminate seven of them and never think about them again so it's just like know what you want to do and stay focused and, and continue on on that path that was Maria I loved hearing about how her targets changed over the year as she did and how some of her ideas that she was really excited about a year ago just fell by the wayside and she found new things to develop and I always find walking away from projects quite hard, especially when you've invested a lot of time and energy into them. But sometimes you need to cut your losses and sometimes you need to focus on a new thing and a change of direction. And I loved her being so open and candid about that process and, and how some things that just stopped mattering and she didn't want to put energy into them. So that that was really inspiring and that was really great to hear someone be so honest about that if you're new here please do hit the subscribe button if you're old here please do give us an ideally honest review in itunes uh the five star ratings are rolling in and i'm really proud of that i would love to get them up i would love to continue they, they sort of help with chart positionings they also help with social proofing the podcast and they also help with getting people interested in the show because they they generally just offer so much for the show that I, I, I don't really want to go into it every week. But if, if you could leave a review, it takes two minutes to do, and it really helps out the show. So if you do nothing else, please do do that. Um, if not, if you don't want to make an iTunes account, please share this episode with someone that you think will get some value out of it. Uh, I, think, I think quite a lot of creatives will enjoy this podcast and enjoy the hearing the process of performers and what's going on behind the scenes so please continue to share it it really helps with download numbers which helps us get bigger guests on all of it all of it contributes also please do think about joining the facebook group or following us on twitter the twitter is at audio time travel and the facebook group is called the audio time capsule and it is on facebook obviously uh, each week I take one question that the guest asks themselves and ask it to you and get your feedback. So if you'd like to answer this in the Facebook group, it would be great to know what was the last project you walked away from and why? And how did you manage to do that? And was it hard for you? What was the decision making process in it for you? I'd love to I'd love to hear about some abandoned projects this week. Let's go the other way. We're always talking about things that we did that succeeded. I'd love to know about things that you thought you, you put lots of effort into and lots of time into and you thought, you know what? It's, it's not worth pursuing, it's just not going to happen, or, or I'm going to have to shelf it at least for now. So what are your abandoned projects? What are your half-baked, half-finished and shelved ideas? I'd love to hear some of them. The Audio Time Capsule is a fruit that got in Gravity's Way production for the internet. All elements were created by me, comedian Simon Kane, except the music that was composed and recorded by David Jordan. Thank you very much for listening, thank you very much for subscribing, and thank you very much for rating and donating if you do. I'll see you all in about 14 days' time. Bye!